Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I'm the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And in today's video, we're gonna be creating a calico glitter geo design. Now I call this like calico glitter because we're gonna be using a few different colors all kind of scattered throughout the tumbler all willy nilly. Um, I'm gonna be using all five colors from the OBX PG palette, which came out a few months ago. All these colors are available on the website now, but the moment I saw this palette, I absolutely fell in love with how beautifully all five of these colors harmonize together. I knew exactly what I wanted to create the minute I laid eyes on it. So I'm really excited to finally bring you guys this video. I hope you enjoy it. You're gonna find all the products that you see listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so here we go. I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup. If you need help on how to prep your cups, I will link a video down below that I think you'll find helpful. But I'm gonna be using three different color spray paints today to paint my base coats. And I'm just spraying in kind of like long staggered sections. So the first color was a flat black. This next color is deep teal from Rust-Oleum. And I'm almost mimicking what would be like vertical brush strokes up and down the cup, again, in just kind of a random pattern, not a whole lot of rhyme or reason, but I do want the colors kind of evenly distributed, if, if you will. So like every view of the cup from any angle will have all three colors included. Okay. The third color I'm using is rose gold from Design Masters. I'll have all these paint colors listed down in the description box. All right, and then once I'm done spray painting my cup, I'm going to let this dry in front of a space heater before I move on to the next step. All right, and now that my paint's dry, I'm ready to apply my glitter. I'm going to be using epoxy as my adhesive for my glitter today. And I've mixed five milliliters of epoxy and I'm going to apply less than one milliliter onto my cup. My cup should be pretty warm from putting it in front of the heater to dry the paint. So my epoxy should spread on pretty easily. Um, in this frame, I'm having a little bit of a hard time because my epoxy was actually curing really fast. <laughs> Uh, so it was a little bit harder to spread out. But anyway, the goal here is to get a super, super thin, thin coat, and we want everything covered completely, all right? Once I got my epoxy applied, I'm going to start adding my glitter. I'm starting with my chunkiest cut first, which in this case is Kooks from PG Olive Glitters. Again, we're using all five colors from the OBX palette. I will have them linked and listed down in the description box. My glitter will just kind of be staggered randomly. While we're establishing our pattern, you want to have very light coverage on your glitter at first, okay? So after I apply the kooks with very light coverage, I'm gonna go over it with Denmark. Denmark is a finer cut, and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it throughout kooks to add some dimension and help me blend later on. Next, I'm going in with the cut, which is kind of a medium chunky mix. Again, following the lines from our staggered paint design and just sprinkling it on. We are going to get some blending in between the colors so long as we start with light coverage at first and build up from there. Next, I went in with OBX, which was definitely my favorite color from this palette. This was a really fine cut, so you want to be really gentle when you're sprinkling it on. Next, I went in with po Pogu, Pogue, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, and it is a very dominant color, so definitely go easy on it because it will dominate the whole design, and I didn't really want that. Um, so I went back in with the cut over the top of that just to make sure that it wasn't too greenish teal, and then I let it rip with Denmark in the end to just help kind of blend everything. What we should be left with is kind of like a hodgepodge, almost like a patina look with our glitter. 
I let my glitter dry for about two to three hours and then I went on to apply my first coat of epoxy. I did not seal the glitter before epoxying. I just aggressively tapped off all the excess and the glitter mostly stayed put. With this type of design, it doesn't matter if we get a little bit of movement. For my first coat of epoxy, I used 30 milliliters of Volumolite's Amazing Quick Coat. This is a fast drying epoxy, so I only had to wait about two to three hours before I was ready to apply a second coat. I applied a second coat with almost 30 milliliters of epoxy right over this. And I let that second coat dry for at least four to six hours before we moved on to the next step. Again, it is a fast drying epoxy, so your dry time may vary based on the type of epoxy that you're using. All right, and so now my cup has two layers of epoxy on it and it's mostly smooth, so I'm ready to apply my water slide. I've got two sheets of leopard print here that I've already printed and sealed five times with nice light coats of Rust-Oleum two times gloss clear spray paint. <laughs> if you need help with how to print full sheet water slide, I will link a tutorial down below that I think you'll find helpful. All right, and I think really thin, even coats are the key to getting reliable water slide that's not going to bleed or tear on you okay make sure you do nice even coats and a good amount of them i did five today okay um and then i just kind of ripped sections of the water slide to roughly fit the gold and copper glitter sections on my cup and then i cut off the excess with my craft knife or i just ripped it with my hands uh, to make it look a little more organic. I didn't want to just cut these sections with scissors. I wanted them to kind of melt into those teal sections, almost like the leopard print is part of kind of a patina vibe kind of thing that we have going on. I don't know, but I really love it. I'm into it. <laughs> all right. And so I just did this all around the cup to all of those gold and copper sections. I don't think a technique like this would really work uh, with lighter color glitter options just because the edges would be really noticeable. It would just look like you slapped pieces of water slide on there. So definitely save this te technique for you know a darker color palette. So I just did that to all of the copper and gold sections all the way around the cup using my silicone brush to smooth out the water slide after I applied it, squeegee out all the excess water, all right, but also keeping the surface of the water slide a little bit moist as it's drying because what water slide does as it dries is it kind of shrinks and contracts a little bit. So if it's well adhered to the cup and it doesn't have some moisture as it's drying, it tends to crack, okay? I'm just cutting off any kind of excess that I don't need with my craft knife. And once I've got all of this applied, I'm just going to let it dry for about a half hour. All right. And another thing I want to mention is you don't want to apply clear water slide to a sanded surface because it's going to make it look kind of foggy and weird. Okay. So only apply your water slide to a glossy surface. All right, so once our water slides dry, I'm ready to apply another coat of epoxy and this coat's gonna be really thin. Mainly, I just need to seal in that water slide and protect it before we move on to our geode paint. So I've got about 20 milliliters for this coat here. I'm just using regular Alumalite's Amazing Clear Cast. This is gonna take about eight to 12 hours to dry before we're ready to move on to our next step. All right, so my next step, now that that thin coat of epoxy is dry, is to apply the decal that will act as my stencil through our distressed paint for kind of like a peekaboo look. All right, you can find this file in the file section of the Flynn Sisters community group. If you're having a hard time finding the files in the Facebook mobile app, you'll want to get on like a desktop or a laptop computer log into Facebook through there and you'll definitely be able to find it in the file section then. All right. And so I'm going to apply my decal just like I would any other way. <laughs> I'm just loosening the backing paper here with my decal face down on my desk to loosen the vinyl to make sure that it'll transfer drama free, 
once it's on the cup. I'm going to use the overhang of my clear transfer tape to anchor one side of my decal down and use the hinge method to apply. Being sure to measure twice, so I only have to cut once <laughs> before I do that though. Make sure everything's centered on the cup and straight, especially with a decal like this. Once I got my decal applied, I'm going to mask off half of my tumbler with some blue painter's tape, leaving the side that we applied the decal to exposed. And then once I have that masked off, I'm going to apply a coat of flat black spray paint. This coat should be a light coat. Don't go too heavy on this, okay? And it's important that we use flat black for this because if you use a semi-gloss or a gloss paint, it's going to be harder to clean up during the distress process. As that coat is dry to the touch, I'm going to apply a generous coat of flat white spray paint over that. It's better to do two light coats than to do one heavy coat and get some drips because we don't want to have any kind of drips or mess ups at this stage of the game, okay? Because it's going to be a pain in the butt if we have to remove any paint at this point, okay? All right, and then as soon as my paint's dry, I'm ready to take off this masking tape and remove all those teeny tiny letters from the stencil that we placed earlier. All right, and just be really careful when you're taking off all these letters. It looks worse than it is, but it wasn't actually too bad. It took me about 10 minutes. <laughs> all right, and then if you happen to scratch your paint during this process or mess up a little bit, no big deal. Just spray a little bit of white spray paint into a medicine cup. Use a fine point paintbrush and just fix any little boo-boos that way. And then once I got all my little letters done, I was ready to move on to my distressing process. I've got some acetone here in the blue container and some 91% rubbing alcohol in the pink container. Um, so for best results, definitely use 91% alcohol, not 99 or 70. And for acetone, uh, use the one from the hardware store or if you can find absolute 100% acetone from your... Um, beauty supply or nail section of the store, that's fine too. Uh, we just want the good stuff, okay? I'm using an old rag and I'm going to use acetone to remove my larger sections first, like up around the top and the bottom rim. After I remove a large section of paint with the acetone, I'll go in with a clean section of my rag and clean it up with some 91% rubbing alcohol and remove all that excess paint where it looks muddled and things. I hear a lot from people that they have a hard time removing all that excess paint from the surface. Uh, and a couple of tips for you would be to use a tea towel or a rag, not paper towels or a terry cloth towel, if that makes sense. Not like an old towel, but a tea towel or a rag is ideal. Um, and you're going to have to put your back into it. There will be some points that you need to really press hard into that white paint to remove the excess black paint, okay? And towards the end, once you've mostly removed all the paint that you've wanted to remove, you can go back with just a clean rag and the rubbing alcohol only and really press hard into that surface to number one, add some more distressing, but number two, really put in some elbow grease to remove that excess paint. Don't be afraid of removing too much paint from the letters. If you have to go over the letters a little bit, they're not really gonna budge, particularly if you are mindful of doing a thicker coat of white paint than you did the black paint when we did our spray painting process earlier, okay? Because you have to think about the speed in which, or the amount, of like solvent is going to eat through that paint. Like if we have more of the white, it's gonna be harder to remove than if we have less of the black, which will be easier to remove. I hope that all makes sense, all right? So I hope that helps if you guys have struggled to really get that white really clean after this distressing process. I usually take about probably 15 to 20 minutes off camera when I'm filming this process to really go through with just a clean rag and the alcohol to really refine 
my distressing and the white sections. I know that seems a little bit excessive, <laughs> but when you see the results, it's absolutely worth it. And it's such a striking look on a tumbler. Absolutely love it. It's worth the extra work in my opinion. All right. So once we get done with all this paint distressing, <laughs> I'm ready to move on to my final coats of epoxy. So what I'm going to do now is I've got about 30 milliliters of epoxy. I'm going to go right over this paint, coat my cup like I normally would. I'm going to let it dry for about 8 to 12 hours. Then I'm going to move into my normal sanding routine. If you've noticed, I've saved my sanding routine to the very end for this tumbler design because I didn't want to sand before we did the water slide and I definitely didn't want to sand before we did this paint distressing technique because if we have any exposed sanded areas before we do this paint technique, some of the paint can get trapped in those sections in stain and look kind of foggy in the end result and you don't want that to happen so you also want to do this paint technique on a glossy surface all right so after i did my sanding and cleaned it up with some dish soap and water dried it off with some paper towels hit it with my tack cloth i was ready for my actual final coat which i'm using alumalite's amazing clear cast plus with the enhanced uv protection to make sure that those whites stay white for a very long time all right i let that dry for about 24 hours before i messed around with it and we were done so that's it for this tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed this video i love how this came out this is kind of an updated version of my fs mantras cup that i did back in 2019 and i absolutely love this look and just a positive message for moving into the new year let me know what you guys thought in the comments and if you like my video please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.